All right, Wednesday night, Ball State and Bowling Green as Maction continues. We've got Bowling Green, five and a half point home favorites, 39 and a half being the total in this game. Uh, Ball State, uh, obviously, have not had a good season. We know that. Uh, they are currently one and three uh, in uh, conference play. The only team worse than them right now uh, in MAC conference play. Uh, the only two teams worse than them are Akron and uh, Kent State, who are at 0 and 4. Uh, in conference play right now. So it's not a very good Ball State team. You know, that being said, we did see a pulse from them uh, really each of the last two games. You know, they had that dreadful run. Like, I wanted no part of them. I was fading them. I remember taking Georgia Southern against them, uh, took Western Michigan against them, um, Eastern Michigan uh, against them. But I did come back on Ball State a couple weeks ago when they played Toledo and that was just let's fade Toledo as double digit favorites, which we talked about earlier in the show. They're brutal. And against Toledo, you know, ball state was catching 17 and a half and they lost by seven right in that game, pretty much from start to finish. And so they got a little confidence from, you know, playing one of the best teams in the conference, pretty tough. And then they rolled that into the central Michigan game and they won outright as five point dogs, 24 to 17. So it was a much better game from ball state. I think they're undervalued right now, you know? And so I'm kind of leaning to ball state here uh, in this matchup against a uh, bowling green. I know. And, P and that's sometimes what you see in college football a team is just so bad for like three, four weeks early in the season, like ball state was. And then when they start to get better, and then when they start to cover some numbers as inflated with inflated point spreads, the betting markets are slow to react, slow to catch up to it. And I think that might be the case here with Ball State right now. They're not a very good offensive team, and especially if they can't run the football, they really struggle. Kelly is a work in progress at the quarterback spot, Kyle Kelly. Uh, but they do have a good running back in Marquez Cooper. I think the key handicap here is what can Ball State's run game do here uh, in this matchup against uh, Bowling Green. Uh, the Bowling Green run defense this season. It's actually their pass defense has been good. Their run defense is the area that's a little bit more vulnerable. So we'll see if um, Ball State can uh, take advantage of that. On the flip side, you've got, of course, the guy that was at Missouri for years, Connor Bazelak, uh, the quarterback here for uh, Bowling Green, uh, a Falcons team that, look, has played some pretty good football three of the last four weeks, that shocking win against Georgia Tech. And remember, when you have an outlier like that, Bowling Green beats a team like Georgia Tech as a three-touchdown dog from a power conference. Sometimes that leaves Bowling Green, you would think, maybe a little overvalued. They got shut out in their next game. Miami O was probably a good hangover spot, but they have bounced back since then with wins and covers against Buffalo and Akron. So Bowling Green's been pretty solid. That being said, you know, I, Ball State definitely has turned a little bit of a corner. Still again, cover two in a row. And in a conference like this where, you know, I don't think there's that huge gap. You know, Toledo is great. Ohio's up there. Uh, you've got your best teams in this conference for sure. But then you group the middling teams to the below average teams. You put them in one big group and there's not as much separation. So it's kind of why I'm leaning here to Ball State here plus the points in this one. What do you think here, C-Mac? Yeah, this was one last night. You know, I just – with. Bowling Green, they're just not a team I want to lay points with, you know, and they should be the favorite. But when I was going through all the, the numbers last night, there's not a lot of difference whether on these two teams. Offensively, they're both not very good. They average about the same. Bowling Green's maybe a little bit better, and they're pretty close. And I'd say Ball State maybe has the better defense. Now, they are on the road, and they just haven't been good on the road, Ball State, uh, so far this year, 4-0 straight up. But I think they can hang around. The offense just hasn't been great. Uh, I got to wait on this. We have a low total. I don't think there's a ton of scoring. And if Ball State is in it and you want to take them as a dog, I think they have to keep it low scoring. They're just not a team that's going to get up and down uh, at all here with Bowling Green. By the way, the guy that started the season as their quarterback, this is a guy I know that played, I believe, at Arkansas State. I think he might have been at Troy, but I definitely remember him from Arkansas State, Lane Hatcher. He got benched mm -hmm. a couple games ago. I mean, that is a, that's bad. I mean, this guy's experienced. He's been around the block and he was just, he struggled so much early on that uh, uh, the head coach here at Ball State basically had to uh, bench him. And that's why he's gone to Kelly here the uh, last uh, few games. So that's a bad sign for Lane Hatcher. I mean, you came here to be the quarterback because you figured, hey, there's no way this job isn't mine. And you're so bad that Mike New has to bench you uh, essentially. So not good. Uh, obviously for Lane Hatcher right now. But, uh, yeah, this is an interesting game. I'm leaning Ball State.